Good day, viewers. I am recording these videos to help teachers of math support their learners in making sense of mathematical concepts and their associated procedures and processes. And today I want to look at multiplying fractions and in particular, how we multiply one fraction by another fraction. Uh, fraction and whole number is a different sort of thing. And in fact, it, you know, potentially, depending on how you introduce fractions, is relatively sort of trivial and straightforward um, to sort of see why a fifth times three is three fifths or two fifths times seven is 14 fifths uh, and things like that. You know, that, that you can get, get a lot of that from the way you introduce fractions. But something like, you know, three fifths times a quarter is potentially a little bit more challenging to help make sense of. So we're going to have a look at uh, something like that. Um, and I'm not going to use three fifths times a quarter. What I'm actually going to use is three quarters times five sixths. So we want to look at this and we want to try and make sense of what does it mean to multiply these things? Well, as always with fractions, and if you've seen some of my other fraction videos using Cuisinaire rods, then you will know this, that in order to, to really represent these fractions, I first need to think about how big is my whole going to be? What am I going to make the value of one? And in this case, in order to be able to represent both quarters and six, I'm going to make this one so this length has a value of one and what that means of course is is that each of these has a value of one quarter because it takes four of them to make one whole and then similarly each of the red rods is one sixth because it takes six of them to make the whole and the model for multiplication we're going to use here is an area model for multiplication or, a, or an increase in dimension, change of dimension model for multiplication. So I'm going to look at this as a three quarters. And I could technically use the uh, blue rod for that for three quarters because it's three times longer than a quarter. Uh, but for this, I want to actually be able to see the separate quarters. And that will be important, as we'll see. And then I've got five, six, so I'm going to create an area for that that is three quarters long by five, six wide. And the question is, what area is contained within that rectangle? Well, there are a couple of different ways I could go about it. I could try and physically tile that space and, and sort of look at how many of those we have. But... The, the sort of nice way or nicer way potentially to look at this is to say, well, if we're going to get a handle on what area this is, we need to compare that area to the size of one hole. See if it's bigger than one, see if it's smaller than one, if it's bigger than one or smaller than one, what value does it have? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually increase each of those until I have a one by one square and here you can see i have a one by one square this is four quarters so that is one hole this is six six so that is one hole so each of these actually has a value of one so i know that the total area contained within that square has a value of one and the question is what does my original three quarters by five six area how does this compare to that? Well, we can see for a start, it's definitely less than one whole. And what we might do here is, is technically start counting up the individual squares. And we can see how many squares we've got all together. We've got a 12 by 12 in terms of the number of squares. It's 12 by 12. And so that's 144 little squares. And my original area was 9 by 10 so that's 90 out of 144 and that's akin basically to the sort of approach that some pupils occasionally take if they're used to having to write common denominators for addition and subtraction which would be to say that that is nine twelfths and that this is ten twelfths and so i can see that all together i have 144 little squares in there of which 90 were part of my original area. And I could do that. You know, I could 
make that argument on this square grid. But actually, there's a nicer argument I can make here. And the nicer argument is one that is more easily generalizable into why we end up doing what we all know we do, which is multiplying numerators and multiplying denominators. And that's to say, well, if we look at a rectangle that is a single green rod long by a single red rod wide. So if we look at that rectangle, we have lots of those in this space. We have lots of what are in effect and for the little squares, two by three. OK, how many of those do we have within our square? And it's quite clear very quickly, one would hope to see, well, actually, that's going to be four times six because I have four of those rods along by six down. So I have one, two, three, four, and then I have six rows of that. So that will give me 24 equal sized rectangles within that square space. And then if we look at how many of those we have that are part of the original area that I was trying to evaluate, which was the three quarters by five, six, well, we can see I'm going to have three by five of those. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's going to keep going. So I'm going to have 15 of those. And therefore, I'm going to have 15 20 fourths. And we, of course, can then simplify that. And we could have simplified it here by cancelling or cross cancelling, if you want to term it, that common factor of three. And there's no easy way to capture that in this representation, at least not one that I'm aware of. But what we can do, having worked to this point, is now we can generalize this and say, well, let's let's just think about other fractions. Let's think about, let's take that one I said before, which I think was something like three-fifths times a quarter, but let's make it three quarters. And we can think about that without having to model it. And we can think about the fact that, well, that would be, there would be five rods along here and four rods along here to make the whole. There wouldn't be these rods but there would be five of some rod and four of some rod that would make the hole, which means that I would be able to break my hole into 20 little rectangles. And if we think about how many rods would form my original area, the area I'm trying to evaluate, would be, it would be three of those quarter rods and three of those fifth rods. And that would give me nine of those little rectangles is the actual area I am looking for. And so I'd have 9 twentieths. And potentially, you can actually extend that beyond just proper fractions. You can bring in and sort of say, right, what about five quarters? But then you, what you are going to need to do is sort of reimagine these within here. So if we were to just do that very quickly and look at five quarters times five, six. Well, we know our whole is still here. So we know our whole has still got 24 of those little rectangles in it. And we know that in the area that I want, it was five by five of those. So there are 25 of those little rectangles in the area that I wanted. But in effect, what I'm saying is, well, what I could do is move the five or four of the five in this row or in this column sorry four of the five in that column and fill in the remaining part of that square and then i'd have one left over which would be starting to form part of the next whole square so this is potentially one way that we can look at multiplying fractions and multiplying two fractions, one fraction with another fraction, in a way that links to other multiplications, in particular the area model, and links to our already pre-existing understanding of fraction and what it means to represent fractions in this way. So that's my short video on multiplying two fractions. As always, I'd like to say a big thank you to MassBot.com and its creator, Jonathan Hall, for this fantastic website that he's produced that I am using to create these videos but as well as the manipulatives on here and all the different virtual manipulatives that you see you'll see me use throughout the videos uh, there is also all sorts of other things on that website and if you haven't yet been to that website and had a good look through then please do take the time to do so it will make your life as a teacher of math easier I can pretty much guarantee that and if you are interested in using visuals and manipulatives 
and representation in general to support your learners in making sense of mathematical concepts and their associated procedures and processes. Then you can, of course, check out my website. My website is visiblemaths.co.uk. And one of the sections of that website links to my book, which is also Visible Maths. And that's the reason the website is Visible Maths. Uh, and in that section of the website, which is links to my Visible Maths book, you can uh, Go to the publisher's website. There's a link there to the publisher's website. The publisher is Crown House Publishing. And on there, on that link, you can see some sample pages. And if you feel like it would be useful, you can place an order. I will be making these videos throughout lockdown and potentially beyond. So if there is a particular concept or process or procedure that you feel like you would want modeling and help make sense of using manipulatives or visuals or representation in general, uh, then please do give me a shout and hopefully I will get around to making it for you. Thank you very much for your kind attention today.